This video is over Lesson 42, Volume, and it's for my pre-algebra classes. So before we get to volume, we're going to start by talking about area. So area is the measure, uh, measurement of surface enclosed by a figure. Now when we talk about surface, surface is two-dimensional. And so area then is also going to be two-dimensional, which means when we take a look at its units, its units are going to have a square on them, an exponent of two because it's two-dimensional. So, or we could actually write that out as square units, or we can abbreviate square as SQ. So each of those mean exactly the same thing. When we get to volume though, volume is a measurement of space enclosed by a figure. And space is 3D. So it's going to have, instead of square units, it's going to have cubic units. So because it's 3D, it'll have an exponent of 3. Or you could actually write that out as cubic units, or cubic is abbreviated as CU. And again, each one of these are the same. So as we're finding our volumes, we need to make sure that if we're doing our work correctly, we are ending with cubic units. And so making sure that your units are part of your work can be a way to, to catch mistakes. So in the course of doing your work, if something happens where you only end up with square units, well, something went wrong. Or if you end up with units to the fourth power or units to the fifth power, something went wrong. So make sure that your units are part of your work. So when it comes to volume, we're going to start off with prisms. Now a prism is made up of two bases. And those bases are going to be congruent polygons. So two bases, but then with rectangles connecting them. Two bases with rectangles connecting them. And the formula for the volume of a prism is capital V for volume equals capital B and then a lowercase h. And remember the capitalization here actually does matter, it actually does communicate something to us. So specifically what's being communicated here is every time we have a lowercase letter like the H here, this is talking about something that we could potentially take a ruler to and actually measure its, its length. But anything that has a capital letter is telling us this is something that would need to be calculated. So in this case, H, H here stands for height. I kind of messed that up, I'm going to fix that. So height. There we go, that's better. Specifically, the height of the prism. And to find the height of the prism, this is going to be what the distance that connects the bases. So if we think about all those rectangles that are connecting base to base, so how long are those, or how tall are those rectangles. Now this capital B here, uh, this capital B does stand for base, but because it's a capital this means we're calculating something about the base. So remember that the bases are polygons. So what we want to calculate about these bases is their area. So 
So if we calculate the area of the base and then multiply that by the height of the prism, that will give us the volume of our prism. So by way of example, let's drop down about three spaces on our paper here. And then I'm going to ask you to draw uh, just a little segment right like that. Um, sometimes putting that in the shadow works a little better. I don't know. So just a little segment like, like there. And then I'm going to draw a line out here. And then I'm going to connect that. So I've got this triangle here. From each of the corners of my triangle, I'm then going to drop a line straight down three spaces. And then I will connect the bottoms of those. And hopefully if we've done this neatly, we should have kind of almost looks like a wedge. We should have this 3D effect here. And let's go ahead and say that this is 12 inches right here. And I'm going to say that this is 8 inches along there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here very small. I'm going to do a little dashed line. So it's going to come from this corner to that 8 inch side. And then I'm going to make a little right angle mark. I know this is kind of tiny. Um, so I'm just going to draw an arrow to that. And we're going to label that as 3 inches. So to find the volume, we need to think out the formula. So the formula is V equals B. So let's just start with that. So V equals B. So B here would be the area of this base. Um, well, what is the area of the base? We don't actually know. We're not actually told here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop down a line and I'm going to start by figuring out the base of this, the area of the base of this prism. Since the base of this prism is a triangle, then we need to think through the area of a triangle. Area of a triangle is one half b h. So one half times the base of the triangle. The base of the triangle, remember the base and the height have to make a right angle. So we put that right angle symbol there which means that 8 inches is going to be the base of my triangle. Now this h here, being part of the area of a triangle, means the height of the triangle. So that's going to be the 3 inches. So times 3 inches. So if we go ahead and simplify that, half of 8 is 4, times 3 is 12. No units, inches, inches. So inches times inches makes square inches. So we just discovered what B is. Now that we know what B is, we can come up here and put B in. So B is 12 square inches times, okay, next part of the formula, B equals B H. So H here, remember, is the height of the prism. Height of the prism is how far to connect your bases. So the top of base with this bottom base that we can't see. Well, it's 12 inches from base to base. So times 12 inches. And so if we multiply that together, 12 times 12, we probably already have memorized. Um, that's a pretty popular one, is 144. Now for the units, square inches times inches. So this is inches times inches times inches again, well that's a total of inches times inches times inches, that's a total of cubic inches. And so that is my volume. We're going to take a look now at rectangular prisms in particular. And sometimes we have a special group of prisms that lead to a specialized formula. 
And that's what we're going to see here. So in general, since this, these are prisms, V equals BH just like it did before. However, what we need to take into account is, since it's a rectangular prism, the area of the base is going to be the area of a rectangle, length times width. So if we take that then and replace B here with length times width, then we're going to have V equals, and then instead of B, we'll have length times width, and then we've got height. And this is the formula that you probably remember using from previous classes, and it's the one we're going to continue to use, particularly with rectangular prisms. So when it's a rectangular prism, it's just length times width times height, but we can see now that it really comes from this formula right here, which works for all prisms in general. It's just been specialized specifically for rectangular prisms. So for our next example, we're going to draw, uh, cut down a couple lines, we're going to draw a segment kind of like this, and then go like that. And then let's drop down from each of those corners four spaces. And then we'll connect the bottoms. And there's my rectangular prism. For this I'm going to say five centimeters, two centimeters, and then we're going to call this eight centimeters. So to find the volume we're going to go with the formula. So V equals length times width times height, LWH. So we're going to start with L. Uh, as I look at these though, which is the length, which is the width, which is the height? Well, typically the height is considered to be the one that's going up and down. Length is usually the one going left and right, which means width is the one where if we kind of imagine the 3D effect here, this is the one that would be going forwards and backwards. So V equals L, so V equals, well, L is 5 centimeters, times width, the width here is 2 centimeters, times height, so times 8 centimeters. Now it's all multiplication, so I would just go ahead and do this in whatever order makes the most sense, whatever is easiest. This time the easiest is probably just to work from left to right, because 5 times 2 is nice and easy, 10, then times 8 is 80. So my number is 80, now look at the units. This is part of what I'm training you to do, is I want you looking at those units and using those to help you get your answer. So if I have centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, well something times itself three times is cubed. And so we get the cubic centimeters that we know we need for a volume. All right, on to the back, just because I'm running out of space there. We're going to get even more specialized. And we're going to look at a special rectangular prism called a cube. Now, what's special about a cube is that the length the width and the height are all equal to each other. And in algebra, if you've got three different values that are all equal to each other, instead of using three different variables, we'd rather just use the same variable multiple times, or just use one variable. So we're going to simplify this down, and instead of talking about length, width, and height, we're just going to talk about side length. Because all those three different side lengths are the same. So our formula for a rectangular prism, V equals L, W, H, can get even more specialized because what I can do now is I can replace L, W, and H with S. So this becomes V equals S, S, S. And then if we simplify that, we get our equation V equals S cubed. And this actually is the very reason why the third power gets the nickname cubed, because it has to do with the volume of a cube. Down here, I'm going to start with a square. 
and then I'm going to kind of come up at, as a, at a diagonal from those three corners and connect them. And so there's my cube. And since all the side lengths are the same, I only need to label one of them. I'm going to label this one four feet. To find its volume, we're going to use its formula, V equals S cubed. In this case, though, S is four feet. So remember, in order to cube the entire side length, we need parentheses around that. And then from there, it's just a matter of finding your answer. So four feet times four feet times four feet, well, four times four times four, four times four is 16, times four again is 64. And then feet times feet times feet would be cubic feet. So this cube has a volume of 64 cubic feet. Which leads us now uh, to something a bit more complicated. And that is what we can call complex prisms. For our complex prism, I'm going to come down several spaces. I'm going to draw a horizontal or a, a diagonal line like about like that. And then I'm going to come out from that at approximately a right angle. I'm going to come down about three spaces. So this one's going up about four. That's coming down about three. And I want to come back one, trying to make about a right angle there. And then I'm going to come back this way, another one. Again, trying to make a right angle. And then I'm going to come down, try to come down three spaces. If I've done that right, then these should connect up at about right angles. And so that is what we can call a complex shape. Now we're going to turn it into a prism. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these bottom points here, and I'm going to just go straight down two spaces on my paper. Hopefully you see the 3D effect already starting to take shape. It kind of looks like a weird table. But we're going to connect the bottoms. And so instead of a weird table, maybe it's just an oddly shaped building. So our oddly shaped building here, I'm going to say that this side here is 20 yards. We're going to call this side right here 15 yards. I'm going to kind of shift my writing here. Uh, I'm going to call this 16 yards. And I'm going to call this 12 yards. And then right next to this, we're going to say 10 yards. If we want to find the volume of a complex prism, it's still a prism. So we're still going to use that formula, V equals VH. So V equals B is where we're going to start. So V equals, and I need the area of that base. So just like we did before, I'm going to kind of step below here and find the area of that base. In this case, because this is a complex shape, I would break this up into two different sections. And probably the easiest way that I see to do that would be to just go right like that and break it right there. Because now I have two rectangles. So rectangles are easy. It's just length times width. So if we look at the big guy here, the big guy is obviously 20 yards long times he's only 12 yards wide. It's not the full 16. Notice the full 16 goes beyond that red line. So it's only the 12 would be the width. But then we're going to have to add on the area of this little guy. So if we look at this little guy, remember this is 16 all the way across but this is only 12. So from here to here is 12. How much more then to get to the full 16? Well, that's got to be 4 yards then. 
Now looking at it over here, if from here to here is 20 yards all the way across, but here to here is only 15, how many more to get to the full 20? Well, this must be the missing 5 yards. 15 plus 5 would make that 20. 12 plus that 4 would make this 16. So my little guy is 5 yards long and 4 yards wide. All right, we got some simplifying to do there. We're going to follow the order of operations. We'll start with multiplication. So I'm just going to throw an equal sign there. 20 times 12 is 240. And don't lose track of your units. So yards times yards is square yards. 5 times 4 is 20. Yards times yards is square yards. Now units work a lot like, like terms. We talked about like terms the other day. And remember the variables had to have had to have the same variables, had to have the same exponents. So the fact that these are both square yards, it works a lot like those like terms, it means we can add them up. But when we're all done, it's still going to be square yards. So addition is not going to change that, it's just going to combine them. So 240 plus 20 is 260. So the base, the area of the base is 260 yards. Excuse me, square yards. Well, the formula is V equals B H. So now we have to multiply that with the height of the prism. So the height of the prism that connects the base on top with the base that we can't see on bottom, that's the 10 yards right here. So the height of the prism is 10 yards. And at that point, that's real easy. Multiplying by 10 is just going to shift that decimal over one more place, give you another zero. So 260 with one more zero. 2,600. Now the units, if I've got yards times yards times another yard, that's yards cubed or cubic yards. So 2,600 cubic yards. And that is the end of our lesson.